right, everybody, we are back to some decks, and believe it or not, I do actually play this game. I don't just cast it. I know sometimes I forget that as well, but uh, finally made it to Diamond, so there's that. Going to try to make that push for Masters uh, in the next week or so. Hopefully get that pretty soon, and uh, maybe even qualify in that top 700 for the tournament, so we shall see. But finally, I mean, honestly, having a lot of fun with the game right now, just because the recent patch, everything seems super healthy. And I just want to I want to play the game. Um, like, I actually get a little mad when I have to cast, and I want to play. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, that's, that's where I'm at right now. But it does not take away from me loving casting. Obviously, I love watching it just as much as I love playing it. But today, we are playing it. And we got some return here of good old Bald Eagle. And if you haven't heard of that deck before, it is Brahm Anivia. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, this did help me. Actually, sorry, this is this is diamond gameplay. So I, I got from diamond four to diamond three so far with this deck. Um, these two games are actually one's a mirror match and the other is TF. No, not TF Swain. That's not a thing anymore, really. Swain Ezreal. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. So um, honestly, this deck does pretty well. It's a harder deck to pilot, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But as always, we're gonna go through two games. Uh, we're going to go through the deck itself prior to that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you love the Legends of Runeterra content. we got tons of it here. Tons of tournament content as well. And don't forget to turn on the bell. Follow every me. Every, wow, every me. What is that even? Wait, follow me on stuff somewhere. I don't know. Whatever. But without further ado, let's get into the deck. Good old, well, I guess Braum, Nivea, or Bald Eagle. I like Bald Eagle better. We're going to go with Bald Eagle. So here we have it, Bald Eagle. I'm not gonna lie, this is the this is the build. Like this isn't this isn't rocket science. Uh, I didn't make this myself. This isn't like this super original deck. This is Bald Eagle. Uh, this I can't actually think of who was credited originally with this deck. I know BBG played it when it was first really big. Um, like this was a few formats ago as well, but. Either way, this is Bald Eagle. Uh, it's basically the entire removal suite from Shadow Isles. And then you pop into Harrowing with Anivia and you call it a day. Um, now, this became big originally when Braum had one attack, but he got nerfed. So, or well, unbuffed or whatever you want to call it or half unbuffed. Because now he does get the 3-3 three, three Poro no matter what on first damage. So there's that. But uh, it's still good, right? So... The biggest thing now is that there are a fair amount of fearsome decks floating around. So we have Spider Aggro popping up again. And we also have fearsome miss rates with go get it miss rates, stuff like that. And these 3 3 Mighty Poros actually come in pretty big with that 3 attack to be able to provide a fearsome blocker on a regular basis. So it's, you know, obviously you get something like a Frenzied Skitter or they can't block, but the idea is that you always have a blocker at least available to you at some point. So Braum does a lot of work. Uh, he is actually hard to remove nowadays unless you're playing against somebody that has hardcore removal like another Shadow Isles deck. And uh, beyond that, listen, this deck just stalls. There's nothing to it. There's, this is, you have Averroes Sentries, you have Hapless Aristocrats to just put out on the field for fodder you know blockers this just helps you you know dig through your deck a little bit more same thing with glimpse and yeah you got the three vile feast three avalanche three grass three withering three vengeance two ruination so very typical build and uh again the idea is to obviously just get an ivia to die resummon it with rekindler get a nice little harrowing on the board and boom what do you know you have a crap ton of anivias on the field so without further ado let's go ahead and get into both games here the mirror match is pretty interesting as well but um there's a lot of intricacies in actually playing this deck correctly, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to get into this first game with you guys. All right, so Brahm Anivia versus Ezreal Swain, which this is like probably the most popular Ezreal I've seen as of late. I know that Draven Ezreal is becoming a thing again, um, so I have seen that around a lot as well. But uh, in this case, this is Swain Ezreal, and essentially all they're trying to do is just remove everything you throw on the field. So we're not really going to have much to remove um, aside from possibly getting a kindly Tavern Keeper down, which they can gotcha or Thermo or whatever to their heart's desire. Uh, the Braum, I guess, is really what they want to try to be saving their removal for. So if we can get the removal out on something like a kindly Tavern Keeper early, we'll probably, probably feel pretty good about that. Uh, but 
in the meantime, what we want to do is try to rush to our win condition, which is, as per usual, getting a ton of Anivias out. So getting Ezreal down, and, and this is the thing with Ezreal nowadays too, right? It's almost always right to actually just play your Ezreal early because uh, he is kind of this self-fulfilling prophecy similar to Maokai where he gets his own targets by getting the Nexus Strike, getting the Mystic Shot in hand. Um, so you're not really worried about keeping him in hand, holding him the entire game as a win condition. So this is really smart on the part of our opponent to go ahead and get this Ezreal down um, so you can start kind of picking off any of the little tiny things that we summon like this Averroesian Sentry and the Hapless Aristocrat. So um, overall, not the greatest start for us, but we do have an Avalanche. We do have a Grasp of the Undying in hand to go ahead and deal with this Ezreal if we need to. Um, that's unfortunate with the Averroesian Sentry. We kind of wanted the, the Chem Punk to, to block, but now we're in a situation where we know we can just freely kill this Ezreal. We know we'll have a blocker for the Chem Punk. Uh, there's nothing that our opponent can do about it so we can avoid that other nexus strike there from the chem punk to get additional spell generation which we don't want right because the thing with ezreal swain is they don't have any large like wide aoe removal they don't have withering whales and stuff like that they don't have uh this giant uh, ruination or something like that the chem punk pickpocket could enable them to randomly pull something that will be a little bit more effective than the the single one-off removal that they currently have now, in the situation here, uh, our opponent has a Swain on board. The biggest thing with Swain nowadays is the whole Fearsome, right? We need to make sure that we maintain Fearsome blockers. At the same time, our Anivia is not leveled yet. Anivia is a Fearsome blocker once it's leveled, which is all well and good. But we do need to get Anivia on the board. So what's happening here is actually really unfortunate in that they removed our only fearsome blocker. They also stunned the Anivia, which means we can't get in that nice little one chip damage uh, to try to you know prevent our opponent from blocking with additional things. This uh, this vengeance though is very nice. Generally speaking, you should probably be saving vengeance for Leviathan if possible, but it doesn't really matter in this deck. So that's the that's the good thing about this, right? Because I know I did a video on. Um, uh, what is it? The Back Alley Casino, right? The uh, the new and improved Twisted Fate Go Hard deck, which is pretty freaking fun, by the way. So, link or pop up or whatever in the thing, up in the thing. <laughs> so, if you guys want to check out that video. But, um, that you usually, with Crumbles and Vengeance, you kind of got to be careful with what you're using on what, depending on what's in your opponent's deck, right? So, you don't want to be crumbling. Like, as an example, I don't want to Vengeance this Chump up on the field. Because I'm getting super low value for my Vengeance, first off, because it's a dinky card that I could probably kill with something else. But second off, the second I use a Vengeance like that, that gives my opponent kind of like the okay to, oh, well, now I can drop a Leviathan and I know that he probably won't be able to kill it. Now, that's the first thought with that uh, original Vengeance, right? The second thought is we need to be saving certain cards uh, for when our opponent does play Leviathan, right? So as an example, we've been passing a lot. Um, the this deck, if if I were to explain how to play this deck in a nutshell, it would be passing game must be strong <laughs> because almost you're almost always gonna be passing with like full mana at some point, and it feels really bad. I'm not gonna lie, it feels like crap. You're like, wow, my opponent can just pass back and blow nine mana that I just had, right? Um, but it doesn't actually matter because you need to be always having basically two options up uh one is rekindler and one is harrowing or ruination depending on how you look at it harrowing if you're on the offensive ruination if you're on the defensive right so right here our opponent all right mystic shot great gets rid of a gets rid of a spiderling that means the ezreal's leveled up so we do have to worry about getting the the, uh, the ezreal off the board we're at 19 health so we're not like super worried which is why we pass again we're not worried right now that we're gonna die um the rekindler right now is also not active something to note uh one of the things that opponents can do is try to play around not killing your anivia to not you know activate your rekindler and this is a perfect example right we just passed again and we burned all our mana but i'm fine with that why because our opponent still had enough mana left to play leviathan and that's the thing you need to be pat like if if our opponent went under eight mana we'd probably play something right because at that point we know they can't play leviathan and get it to stick now they're passing back expecting us to play something nope not gonna happen go for it again all right you're gonna take another attack with ezreal see if i care not really mind i don't mind that at all honestly next attack that even if 
even if this Ezreal attack went through, which I don't know if we, I think, we, yeah, we do let it through. So perfect, perfect example. You can't kind of be the first one to flinch in this matchup. You can't get scared too easily. You have to have very strong resolve in this matchup. Like that Ezreal, that Nexus Strike means nothing. We have plenty of heal. So we have the Kindly Tavern Keeper still just chilling so we can heal up, stay nice and healthy. Don't have to worry about the Ezreal OTK. Now our opponent played Progress Day. That is, all right, red flag. We can play some stuff. What are we going to do? Well, a couple different options here. Actually, not really a whole lot of options, to be honest with you. <laughs> now that I look at the board. Um, the only real option we have would be to, like, grasp the Ezreal. And it looks like I'm considering grasping the Anivia. Grasping the Anivia, actually, I think I end up doing that. Grasping the Anivia makes sense. I still don't have a dead Anivia. This is actually really big. Now, sure, could the egg die? Yeah, it could. It definitely could. But this puts an Anivia in the death pool. And the the biggest things with this deck is you need to get Anivia on the board as fast as possible. So if you have it turn six, play it turn six. As long as you're not too far behind in tempo and you need to do some other stuff. Second, you need to kill it ASAP. All right? Step two, complete. We killed it. Third, you need to get a Rekindler down ASAP. So, like, if you could go turn six Anivia and then it dies turn seven Rekindler, that's, like, the dream, right? You are you just you wreck when that's the case, all right? Now that we have steps one and steps two complete, we have two Anivia on the board. We have a Harrowing in hand. We have a Ruination in hand. We have, all, like, the tools that we need, essentially. When you're in a spot where you have... When you, when you have control over the game, you're still healthy, and you, you manage to keep a Ruination and a Harrowing, you're almost usually always going to win the game unless you're playing against Ionia where they can deny it. Our opponent, this does give our opponent the opening because we played the Rekindler first to get a Leviathan down. But a Leviathan down without the attack token is not threatening. They played it on our turn. Sure, we take three damage. Not worried about three damage. We have the Ruination. So now they've invested all this mana. We're able to use the Ruination. We don't care about our field. Why? Because we, two of them are Anivia. Two of them are just going to come back. It doesn't even matter. Now, this feels bad. Sure. I will say, especially in the mirror match, which you're going to see in a second, a withering whale on your eggs. Feels bad. <laughs> Not going to lie. But it doesn't matter. Why? We have Harrowing. So we know our opponent doesn't have Ionia. We have Harrowing. We're going to get a whole crap ton of Anivias back. Four to be exact. And bada bing, bada boom, we got the win. This is how you do it. You pass. You basically... The biggest thing that I, that I hope you guys take away from this particular match is passing. You need to pass. Even if you're going to burn a ton of mana, pass. The thing with it, and this is one of the reasons why I feel like TF Swain is not nearly as popular or as good as it once was. Eight mana is a lot of mana to commit to a Leviathan. And I think we're at a spot now where it's easier to play around that. Because Leviathan actually doesn't get you as much advantage or as much of a tempo swing as it once did in the past. Uh, just because of certain tools, uh, certain decks that we have now in the meta. You know, you have the TF go hard. You can do so many things on that turn um, where they just basically used up their entire turn on playing a Leviathan. So now, whew, not going to lie. When you see this in Q, you want to kill yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to like, I'm just going to, I'm going to be honest with you. This is not a fun matchup. Now, is it interesting? Sure. But it's like such a mind game, difficult, like, it's a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie. Um, so a couple things here. First thing is, which honestly, there's not a whole lot of people playing this on ladder first off. Let me just throw that out there. So the fact that we actually ran into a mirror match, and I only really play this from Diamond 4 to Diamond 3. So like, what the hell, man? But anyways, Withering Whale. So Withering Whale is kind of the first uh, power card, quote-unquote, that you want to worry about. Actually, no, you know what? Let's start with Braum. Braum is probably the first power card. Uh, if you're able to stick a Braum before your opponent in this matchup, it will help significantly uh, just to put pressure on. Problem is our opponent already drew the Anivia like we did, so we both have it on turn six. So now the Braum is basically just a moot point. Sure, the Anivia is going to attack. It'll do damage to the Braum, but like, we already have the Mighty Poro. Nobody actually cares about that. It doesn't matter. Like right here. We're, we're going to get some damage on the Braum if we take it. We actually don't block with this, I think, because then we could lose the Braum to a Grasp. 
So we want to keep the Braum healthy at four since plays are on grasp. I, again, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, because the chance that you're going to level up Braum in this matchup is like nil. Uh, best case scenario, you get them to use a Vengeance or possibly a Ruination, but I highly doubt the latter. It'll probably be Vengeance. We see here there's an Avalanche now. Technically, if they have a Grasp, I'm not sure what happens after this, but they could still have a Grasp after this and still kill my Braum. So this is my point. Like, it's a little too easy for your opponent in the mirror match killer Braum. So eh, the second they have an Anivia on the board, it's not really going to matter. So next up, we have Withering Whale. And Vile Feast, to be honest with you, as like a, as like a special note. Why does Withering Whale matter? Well, if you are able to get a board clear, like let's say your opponent has, at that point, the Anivias would be leveled up, right? So I don't know. Let's say you like Ruination. I don't know. You can't. You can't play both in one turn. I'm trying to think of a scenario. Basically, let's say your opponent has a bunch of Anivias and you somehow clear them all with one board wipe and you still have five mana left over. However that works. <laughs> they can Withering Whale your board of eggs. I, it happens in this game, I promise. Like I, I don't remember where, but it happens. So, But that is a really big swing if your opponent is actually able to delete you, all of your eggs and make it so that Anivias don't come, come back, which basically limits you to you either get a Harrowing or a Rekindler or you don't. It's your only two top decks that are going to get you back in the game. Um, so to, before we talk about the next couple of cards, you can see too what's happening. The, the same old usual strategy is happening. We need to kill Anivia as quickly as possible. Step one, get Anivia down as quick as possible. Step two, kill it as quickly as possible. Step three, rekindle it as quickly as possible. So both of us, honestly, are getting the same things accomplished, which feels bad. Uh, we have an egg, but it's, it's our attack turn, so we don't have to worry about it dying to one of the Anivia attacks. If we attack with our Anivia here, uh, and it gets blocked. Well, A, we just lose it if, it, if the Rekindler blocks it, but B, we lose it if um, another Anivia blocks it because when they attack, it'll do one damage, yada, yada, yada. So, um, oh, sorry, we're not even Enlightened yet. I was thinking we're Enlightened. So, never mind. This egg actually does not survive because we're not Enlightened. So, that's something to know. We do have the attack token um, on the Enlightened turn, which is definitely an advantage in this matchup. So, take that into consideration from the very start of the game figure out who's on evens and who will get the attack token when your Nivea is leveled up because that will matter um if you are able to as an example get a bunch of Anivias killed prior to turn nine or at least like two or three killed on turn nine even if your opponent has the attack token you can ruination or not ruination harrowing you'll get a bunch of Anivias. yeah you can't attack with them but they'll all die well guess what that means they, they get revived at the beginning of your turn so uh, that'll give you basically an open attack that would likely ki like kill your opponent depending on where they're at in the game or w with their whole, you know, getting Anivia's down and getting them killed strategy. Um, that's just something for the mirror match. In this case, what you're looking to do, and we have a huge advantage right now. If you guys can't tell what it is, look at the hand. Think for a second. Yeah, it's the fact that we have all of our ruination, all of our hiring in hand. These are the power cards. So the chances that our opponent has equal to or more than what we have in our hand right now are very slim. Best case scenario, generally they would have three of those. Worst or worst case, they have like none of them, right? So this is really good for us because the second that they get something like a harrowing off, we can just ruination in response and then we can harrowing on our turn. And even if they have a ruination, we just trade back and forth, right? So. Um, it really puts us in a good spot. Re they're playing Chronicle. We don't play Chronicle of Ruin. I just want to throw that out there. We don't play Chronicle of Ruin. I think it's a, all right. You know what? I'm not, I'm gonna stop myself. I don't think Chronicle of Ruin is that bad of a card, but it's, it's, I don't, I prefer other removal options in this deck. Let's just put it that way. So, so our, this is huge misplay, huge misplay. I think from our opponent, this um sure they basically are one anivia up from us so all is well and good theoretically in their world but a these two anivia attacks don't actually kill our anivia all right b or we block with it so it actually will kill it we'll get the egg so they still have to deal with the egg but b we still have we they have played a ruination we still have two ruination two iron so now like that almost definitely seals the deal for us believe it or not um we don't want a ruination all right, we don't want a ruination here because they didn't harrowing. So instead, we play the harrowing. One of the things that I think people forget, or, or I think people need to know, is pretty important with this deck. 
it's okay to play harrowing when it's not your attack turn trust me when i tell you that open attacking with five anivia or four anivia feels way better than having to play the harrowing on your attack turn and waste almost all your mana and then you give up priority and then your opponent is able to do something in response that is a feels bad man moment um so it feels much better going like this you play it when they have the attack token after they attack generally speaking it doesn't really technically matter if you need to play it on the defensive before they attack that works too obviously just be careful you don't kill all your anivia now we're in a position where they can't ruination because we're open attacking so that's the biggest thing um basically everything on their field is going to die with four anivia swings right i mean that's eight damage so they're not going to have any blockers everything's going to die pretty easily and in the mirror match this is important you get very strict like one happens board loads the next anivia thing happens board loads so as you can see every time an anivia strike goes by an egg pops out then the next anivia strike hits that egg so very crucially if you're able to set yourself up where you have four anivia like this or three or, or even well you need three probably at least if the last strike will almost definitely kill all of the or actually no you need four you actually need four if your opponent has full health anivias on the board it would take three to kill the anivia and the fourth one would kill the egg so just keep that in mind um and then they have another anivia they summon it to the board and we're able to because we say uh we spent the mana on our harrowing last turn we didn't have the attack token we got all the removal mana in the world we even had a, a vengeance on backup uh we got tons of tools in our hand now and this is essentially you can tell you know we're just gonna be able to take the game because at this point we were able to clear our opponent's board and not allow them to have any anivia left now this is actually this is scary not gonna lie uh, this is the other thing. Our opponent is actually playing go hard in this deck. So for the mirror match, I actually don't hate it because of this reason. So, oh, this was this was what I was trying to think of before. This is what I was trying to think of before. I, this, this was not a board wipe that I was thinking of, like, at all. Pack your bags into Withering Whale. Gotta look out for that one. Just saying. <laughs> but, like, I, it's it's insane to me. I don't know. I don't think Go Hard really works in this deck. I think it actually is good in the mirror match for the reason you just saw. It does the five damage. It clears the board of Anivia. If you save Go Hard and you save Withering Whale in your hand to the end of the game, you'd probably be in a pretty good spot in the mirror match. But um, yeah, this is a rough one. This is a this is a takes lots of brain power matchup for you guys out there. So I will say these games do take a little bit longer. So if you're trying to climb ladder fast, aggro obviously is always the way to go. But this gets the job done it wins games it had a pretty good win percentage up to diamond three and yeah try it out all right everybody and that is it that is good old bald eagle again pretty typical from what it was in the past even with the braum changes and uh i mean it's fun it's a good change up from the meta uh you know instead of playing everything else that everybody's playing right now like like i have i have avoided swain ezra like the plague i refuse to play that deck it feels so like zombie like i'm just gonna play the removal you summon i play removal you summon again i play removal again oh i have a swain and leviathan in hand i play swain, like i just mm, not for me so if you guys want to switch it up a little bit check out bald eagle definitely a fun deck will uh get you at least through i mean it's working in diamond right now i don't know if i'll keep using it to get the masters who knows we'll see but as always everybody i hope you like the video stay healthy stay positive i hope shit just works for you and peace out